What's up, everybody? My name is Joshua Yale, and I just got back from the Star Wars Hotel. While Disney's Star Wars Galactic Cruiser doesn't open until next spring, I was given the opportunity to attend a preview event with a small group of press to get a look at the two-night immersive experience. And not to overhype it, but it was a Star Wars dream come true. Now, I'm gonna tell you all about it, including details about the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel, lightsaber training, and an immersive story filled with the adventure and danger of a classic Star Wars movie. But first, two things to keep in mind. One, the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser features a story, and while I'll only be sharing minor plot stuff, if you want to avoid spoilers completely, best make like General Grievous and take the nearest escape pod out of here. Time to abandon ship. <laughs> Second, it's important to note that everything I saw on my visit was a work in progress. So keep that in mind when setting your expectations as I recount to you my brief trip to a galaxy far, far away. So the first question you probably have is, what is Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser? We've all been referring to it as the really expensive Star Wars hotel, and it is that, but after seeing it, I can say it is so, so much more. The best way I can describe it is, imagine you're getting on a Star Wars ride, but the ride is the size of an entire hotel, and the ride lasts two days <laughs> because it's telling a Star Wars story with a beginning, middle, and end. From the second you arrive, the immersion begins. You may wonder why the entrance doesn't look like a spaceship, and that's because it's designed to look like a concrete NASA launch facility. After all, the Star Cruiser is in space, and to get there, you'll walk into a launch pod with windows that are actually screens that let you watch as you blast off into space and dock with the ship in orbit, and the ship is known as the Halcyon. Walking into the main room at the heart of the Halcyon, called the Atrium, there's a soft machine hum simulating the sound of the engines. You hear beeps and boops and announcements in the background. All the windows are those video screens showing stars, planets, and other ships off in the distance. So, walking around, you really do feel like you're on a ship cruising through space. A stay on the Galactic Star Cruiser includes a visit to the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge theme park, and their dedication to maintaining the immersive illusion is so great that Disney is building a new entrance to the park that allows you to go seamlessly from the ship to the park without any turnstiles or parking lots or anything like that. Instead, it's going to feel like the ship has docked at Black Spire Outpost on Batu for the day. Both Galaxy's Edge and Galactic Star Cruiser were developed at the same time, so you'll spot Easter eggs that link one to the other. For example, there's a job posting for a new mechanic hanging on the wall inside Oga's Cantina, and on the ship, you'll meet the mechanic who got the job. That is, if you decide to engage in some role playing. I can't see a thing in this helmet. So to give us an idea of what it's like interacting with the crew on the ship, we were given free reign to explore the atrium and interact with the characters. The ship is filled with all sorts of Star Wars-y people, but whether you want to engage with them or sit back and enjoy a space cocktail at the cantina is completely up to you. So my little group struck up a conversation with a nervous looking crew member in a blue mechanic outfit who introduced himself as Sammy. He asked in a hushed voice if we supported the Resistance because Resistance hero Chewbacca was hiding on the ship and he needed our help because the First Order was there looking for him. Sammy asked me to create a distraction so Chewie could make a break for it, but I was not feeling particularly brave, which is odd because normally I am really loud and love attention, but my friend was, so she went and distracted them. And that gave me and some other guests the opportunity to create a human wall to hide Chewbacca's escape. Then the captain of the ship personally thanked us and taught us a secret code to identify ourselves as allies of the Resistance. So you can see the story starting to take shape. The crew of the Halcyon is secretly trying to help the Resistance while the ship is being occupied by the First Order. Now here's where things get interesting. That was just one way the quest with Chewbacca could have unfolded. Each guest is free to make their own choices. Maybe you would have turned Chewie over to the First Order instead of helping him, you monster. And then different things will happen later on based on what you decided to do. One choice may even lead you to a new quest on Galaxy's Edge, or may lead you to uncover secret areas of the ship that require special access. While there is a larger main story involving everyone that unfolds over the weekend, it seems that no two guests will have the exact same experience because of the smaller story threads they may choose to follow or not. What? <laughs> hey, you 
listen to them. They're dying, Artie. As far as rooming accommodations go on the Galactic Star Cruiser, we got a look at one of the cabins where guests will sleep, and they reminded me of the rooms on an actual cruise ship, for better or worse. The rooms have a sleek design and look outfitted for space travel, which is cool, but one would never accuse them of being spacious. They are tight and compact. That said, given the abundance of activities to do outside the room, the lack of space will hopefully be a non-issue because you'll be out helping the resistance and stuff like that. Now, the entire Galactic Star Cruiser experience is modeled after a relaxing luxury cruise out into space. And like any cruise, each guest will have an itinerary. At first glance, it seems full of unremarkable activities, but as you'd expect from something set in the Star Wars universe, it's not long before you get a bad feeling about this and a ho-hum day turns into an exciting adventure. So, our trip to the bridge for scheduled training was easily the most entertaining part of my visit because it showed this in action. Initially, we were there to learn how to use the weapons, shields, cargo handling, and computer systems, but unexpected events involving, you guessed it, the First Order, turned our relaxing afternoon of lazily pushing buttons into an intense struggle to survive. That involved making daring hyperspace jumps, navigating an asteroid field, and putting those weapon systems to good use. And the bridge also acted as an interactive theater where big story beats played out on the comm screens and with actors on the floor with us, and guests were always being pulled in to help out, which made everything feel even more personal. So we were shown a key story moment from both the first day and the second day of the experience, and getting a peek at what's to come showed how nothing is included without a purpose. Even from the few bits I saw, I could really appreciate how the entire weekend is intricately constructed to create a fun, engrossing story that unfolds over the course of your stay. Elegant weapon, but a more civilized day. Finally, the big question, how do you get your hands on a lightsaber on the Galactic Star Cruiser? Well, everyone will be scheduled for lightsaber training, and what awaits you is a unique playtime session that will definitely scratch that Jedi itch. It involves using a provided lightsaber to deflect laser beams fired by a training remote, and there's a cute little way they do that to make you feel like a Jedi where you can block the lasers without even seeing them. And before you ask, the lightsaber is only meant to be used for lightsaber training and won't be available for sale. Now, I'm sure you're wondering about the special new lightsaber teased for the Galactic Star Cruiser, the one where the blade seems to extend like a real lightsaber. Unfortunately, that lightsaber is not for guests to use, touch, hold in any way, or purchase. It's strictly for use by the performers. I did not get to see the new lightsaber on my visit, so I have no new details to share about it. And yes, I'm bummed about all this too. If I had to guess how the lightsaber will show up during the experience, well, given how Kylo Ren and Rey are frequent sights at Galaxy's Edge, I wouldn't be surprised if they showed up on the Galactic Star Cruiser at some point with their lightsabers, but just don't plan on touching them. That said, the ship does have a boutique that sells merchandise, and a Disney rep told me it's likely that some type of lightsaber will be available for sale there, so you won't go home without getting the chance to buy at least some type of laser sword. Simply put, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is a Star Wars fantasy come true. Everything about it was insanely cool. It's like playing a Star Wars video game, but in real life. You truly feel like you've stepped onto an actual starship and are a part of a Star Wars movie. The overall story is exciting, the ship itself is impressively built and overflowing with adventures waiting to be discovered, and the character interactions add a sense of fun and immersion. It says volumes that I only received a brief glimpse at what the Galactic Star Cruiser has to offer, yet just about everything was incredibly impressive. Except the rooms, but I'll be spending most of my time in the cantina anyway. Thank you so much for watching. For more Star Wars and for more on the Galactic Star Cruiser as we approach its launch on March 1st, 2022, keep it locked on IGN.